Hi, and welcome to this video on UiPath with me, Yeve. In this one, we're going to take a look at the UiPath data service. It's a fairly new feature that was released, I believe, in the second half of 2020. Now it's 2021, so I think we should have a look. So let's get to it. So what is exactly this data service? Well, it's a tabular data store where you can store data for use in your automation. It's in many ways comparable to a database. It's a very simple database, but it has some of the features that you've worked with if you've done any database work. Inside your automation platform, you need to enable the data service. You do that by going to the admin section, to the tenants, and then for the tenant that you want to activate the data service for, you click the ellipses, edit services, and then enable the data service and click Save. That gives you a link here directly to the data service. If we hit F5, we can also see that we get a button out here on the left. Let's go into the data service. So right now, there's nothing in here. There are no entities, there's no data, there is nothing. So an entity in the data service terminology is what we know as a table in a database. Why they call it entities, we'll get back to in just a few minutes, but we'll create one and start uh, getting ready to put some data in it. We'll call this entity employee. And now some will say, why don't we call it employees? We'll get back to that as well. When we create the employee entity, if we click on it, we can see that it comes with some uh, predefined fields, one for an identification and uh, four fields for when and by whom the record was updated and created. I want to create a few more fields. So we'll click the create new field button and we will call this field first name. We can change the data type. We can make it a required field, define the size and stuff. We're not going to do that now. We're just going to create a couple of fields and we'll call this one last name. We'll call one for department. And we will create an H field as well. And for the data type, we'll take a number and click save. So now we have an entity with a few more fields that we can add data to. And if we go into the data tab here, I can click the add new data button and I can add data in these uh, fields over here. And please note that they are arranged by alphabetical order. You cannot change that as it is right now. This is just the way it is. So we'll have to live with that. I'll enter 12 and IT for the department. And we can pretend Bill Gates is the head of our IT department at age 12. And we'll click Save. So now we can see that we have data in here. What I want to do in an automation in just a minute is to use an automation to put data in here. And why would you put data in this entity in the first place? Well, maybe you don't have access to a database. So this is a great way to store data so that automations, for example, can share data. It could be an alternative to storing data in your data queues. Maybe you would like to be able to modify the data and you can't do that in a, in a queue item. And there are just many reasons why you might want to use something like that. Personally, I would probably use a database if I have access to it. But if you don't, this is a great option. OK, so we have an entity now with a little bit of data in it. Now we want to use it in Studio. The one thing we need to make sure is that we have an assistant that is connected and licensed so that we have somewhere to actually do some development. And when I start my UiPath Studio, and it's important that you start the studio after activating the data service. If you kind of want to do things at the same time and you start the, the studio before you, you activate the service, then it's not going to show up inside your studio. So I have a project here called Data Service. I'll open that. And once that opens, you can see that there's a new button that's enabled inside of Studio. And that's this button up here, the Manage Entities button. If I click that, I can see that there's an employee entity listed here. And it says here that a new entity version will be imported and updated into your project. We can see that it has nine fields and one single record. And in fact, if we click this record, we will jump right into the web page where we can see that record. Let's close that again and get back into Studio. So what will happen when I click Save down here is that a new namespace with some new classes will be created. That namespace in this case will be data service. We could change that if we want to. We don't, so I'll just click Save. Now that that is done, I can go to my Project tab, and I can see over here in my Entities group that I have this data service namespace, and I can expand it, and I can see in here that I have an employee entity. 
I get a reminder up here at the top that I need to install a package in order to use this new entity. So I'll click Install Package. I'll select the UiPath Data Service Activities Package. Click Install. Click Save. And what happens now is that in our Activities pane, we'll get some new activities to work with this entity. So if I click Activities, down here at the bottom, I get this new group called Data Service. And that has two subgroups in it. Let me collapse these two first. It has an Entity Record group and it has a file group. One data type that I can use when designing the entity is the file data type. So for example, if I jump back into my designer here and add a new field, and I could add a resume to um, three tip employee, if I can spell that type could be a file. And I can add a description if I want to, I'll just click save. So this group of activities in the file group are dedicated to deleting files, downloading files from or uploading files to a record. We're not going to use that in this demo. What else we can do is we can create, delete, get, update, and we can also query entities for a set of records. And what we'll do in this demo is we'll load an Excel worksheet full of employee records and add them to our entity. So the first thing I want to do is open the main workflow, of course. Then uh, I'll use uh, the trusty old read range activity. And I'll paste in the path to that workbook. And I will just delete the range because I wanted to read the whole sheet. And now this uh, workbook should be read into a data table variable that I'll create here, which will be DTMs. So for each record in this data table, I want to do something. So for each row in the DTMs data table, I want to do something. And what I want to do is, of course, is I want to create an entity record and insert it into our entity. Now this activity is a little bit tricky because what we did when we imported the entity is we created this namespace with this data type in it. So what we need to do in order to add something into an entity is to tell this activity what type of entity is it and then create an object of that type, fill it with data and then give it as the input argument here. So let's do that. When I select the entity type here, you know, what I get is this interface called UiPath Data Services Definition I Entity, and I can't really use that for anything. So if I go up to the type argument up here, I can browse for the correct type. And then in this type browser that I'm sure you've seen before, for example, when using for each loops and, and things like that, I can now say data service dot, and I can find my employee data type here. And this is why I didn't call the entity for employees when I designed it, because I like the idea that I'm creating a new instance of an employee and not an instance of an employees, because that just sounds ugly. So I'll click OK. And now this activity knows that we're working with a data service dot employee object. In order to insert an object, we need to create an object. So in this scope, I'll define a new variable and I'll call it new emp. And as a data type, I will select data service dot employee. The default value, I'll select new data service employee so that I have an instance to work with. Then before trying to insert it into the entity, I'll need to assign some values to this new object that I created. So I'll get the good old assign activity. And in fact, I'll get the multiple assign activity and insert that right here. So now I will add to the new employee. And as, and since this is a data type now, so it knows what fields are available. We have the age field. We have the department, first name and last name down here. So, so this knows what to expect, uh, so to speak. So if I uh, select the age property here, what I want to put into the age property is the row and then the age field, right? And I want to, what I usually do is I convert it to a string and then I convert that string to an integer. There we go. And then I'll add the other fields as well in the same way.
There we go. I sped up the video a little bit to spare you from, from waiting for me. So now I have a new employee object. I fill it with the data that I want to insert into the entity. And now I can say that this is the input, um, the input argument for this. I don't have to add an output argument. I can just uh, go with this as it is. Let's uh, put in a breakpoint here, right here. And then I will hit debug. And if we look at our locals window here, we can see that the DTMs variable, the data table, does in fact have some data in it that we found in the Excel worksheet. So now that it uh, has that, it will try to assign the values from the first record to the first object here. And if I step through it, we can see that it goes through this uh, for each loop. And if we go to our data page here and hit refresh, we can see that now Joe Brown has been added. And if we go back into our studio and just uh, hit run, in fact, we'll just disable the breakpoint and hit run and let it finish. There we go. If we go into our data and do a refresh, we can see that now the data is in here. We can also see that we can upload the resume in here using the upload link, or we could have created an upload or a file object in our automation and added that to the employee object, just like we added values to the other fields. So this is a very simple example of how to use the data service. Hit the like button and hit the subscribe link. Click the notification bell so you get notified when I create more videos. And stay safe out there and we'll see you in the next one.